Hey guys, what's up? This is Lucid, and I've got an interesting video for you here. Uh, this was commissioned by Brecken Sky, uh, one of my Patreon supporters, and uh, he had a pretty interesting idea. He said, hey, hey, how about you do a video about obscure but powerful mechanics most people don't know about? And I was like, okay, well, I mean, that's easy for you to say, but how am I going to know all these obscure, powerful mechanics people don't know about? And then I got thinking of it, and I could think of some. I mean, people know about them. They're not like a secret. But a lot of people don't know about them. So it's probably a good thing to make a uh, YouTube video about. So um, I've got some. Some of these are going to... I mean, if you're a vet, you'll have probably seen all of these. Um, if you're not, if you're kind of intermediate and you've played a few multiplayer games, I bet you you find something here you haven't seen. So, uh, yeah. First one we're going to talk about is Physical Moss Body. Or Physical Resistance and Moss Body. It's a very powerful combination. And basically, the, the way this works is Moss Body blocks 15 damage 75% of the time. But there's a catch to it. If you take over, if, you, if this doesn't block the rest of the damage, like if damage passes through this part in the chain of uh, combat calculations, then it will pop and do poison damage to everybody around it. So you don't want it to pop because if it pops, you're losing that... Uh, reduction. The trick is, is that this comes after protection and after physical resistance. So if you get hit for 30 damage, you'd be like, okay, well, even if we get hit by 30, I mean, if we got hit by 30, sure, this would reduce by 15, but there'd be 15 left over. If you have physical resistance, which is like blunt pierce slash resistance, it's going to cut that in half. So your 30 becomes 15. And then the 15 is going to get reduced um, by 15 and it'll become zero and this won't get popped. And protection also stacks with that. So yeah, things can get pretty crazy pretty quick. Um, and it can't be countered by just having like magic weapons or something like that. Um, and it's also very good against like armor negating damage and stuff like that because a lot of the armor negating damage isn't super high and most of the armor negating damage doesn't go through, uh, you know, physical resistance or what have you. Anyhow, um, so this is just the basic setup. Um, I put, you can do this with them naked, but it doesn't always work well. We're, we're running them into really hard hitting troops. So we're putting a construction two item that costs five gems. And we've got Moss Body, Liquid Body, Elemental Fortitude. This guy's doing Iron Warriors, which is going to give him 20 protection. Uh, and then Regeneration, which is obviously going to be really good. And then Temper Flesh. Uh, yeah, we could have this guy doing Large too. Why not? Uh, and then... Hold and then spells. All right. And uh, yeah, that's basically that. Let's run them in, see how they do. Looks like the battle went a pretty long time. All right, and so these are all the buffs on them. Now, these guys hit really hard. They hit for 26 damage with a big two handed weapon. Generally, you don't want to run little budget thugs into a big pile of angry bandars. Uh, things don't go well, but. Uh, they don't look phenomenal, so, you know, they don't have a full kit of gear, we haven't given them any weapons, but they have, uh, we don't have, they don't have a bless, but they've got pierce resistance, they've got moss body, I mean, uh, physical resistance, they have moss body, they have a, uh, kind of a lot of protection now, and they have regen, um, and I believe we've cast enlarge on them as well, so they've got bonus hit points. All right, and they come in. And you can see they can't really hit us. Occasionally they'll hit us. Now... I want y'all to know what's happening. When a hit goes through, usually that hit has dodged Moss Body. In other words, Moss Body is only going to block 75% of the stuff. Um, so yeah, the and the way all of this stuff gets processed in Dominions is you're... I'm not, there's a big long list of all of the things, like the sequence of all the damage calculations, order of operations. But we're not going to go through all of them. But what will happen is protection is going to be early in that chain. So protection is going to get reduced and block a lot of things. The remainder, what gets past protection, like these guys are going to get past 28 protection a fair amount of the time with the chip damage. Uh, what gets past protection is going to get divided by 2. Right? So let's say you hit for 40 because you got a high damage roll. 12 is going to get through. It's going to get divided by 2. And that's going to become uh, 6. And then 75% of the time, that will get blocked by Moss Body. And because that's less than 15, it won't pop it. It's very hard to pop Moss Body with this combo up, with protection. Um, so yeah. Um, the, the net effect, though, is you basically, if you have big protection, you're going to block a lot of the damage. And then on top of that, 
the physical resistance and moss body, you're going to block basically seven eighths of the damage. It's a lot, and it doesn't get countered by something like magic weapons. It's pretty, it's like legitimately hard to deal with, with weapons. It's a little broken. Um, we may lose the Dryad here, I don't know. Yeah. And the thing is, even if you had, like, Strength of Giants or something else on them, like some other X-Factor, um, it's still gonna be really, really hard to deal with this. It's gonna be really hard. And these guys were, like, fatigued out. You know, they weren't fatigued neutral at all. Um, so they were taking critical hits, like armor-piercing hits, and they still weren't getting through it. And guys, look, these are not, like, super well-kitted dudes. This is a really strong mechanic. Borderline broken. Wouldn't mind it if they got, uh, if it got a little bit nerfed. Um, okay, so that's the first one. The next one we're going to talk about is a pretty simple one. It is the Earthquake and uh, Mass Flight combo, which is a kind of a classic, and I'll explain why that works. We'll talk a little bit about casting time as we do it. Uh, I'm going to get a Queen of Air Elemental, and we'll get a King of Earth Elementals. And Bandarlog is going to be back at it with a big group of these guys. I'll send these over. And uh, Bandar Log. Okay, Pangea. We're going to get actually two Earth Elementals. King of Earth Elementals. All right, and so this is the combo, boys. The combo is that you do Mass Flight and you do um, Earthquake. And I'll explain why this is cool. Well, the reason it's cool is because the cast time means that your mass flight will always go off before Earthquake. All right, this has a cast time of 1 to 75. This has a cast time of 200. Now, um, so that you know, because uh, this will be important if you're just trying to figure out how things work in battles, is that half of the cast time is upswing and half of the cast time is downswing. So this doesn't actually go off after 175, you know, like 1.75 turns. This actually goes off at 1.75 turns divided by 2. But... If you have two, that's important when you've got like multiple spells going together. Like if I were to cast another spell and you want to figure out how this would line up with something else, um, it's pretty important to know that the, about the, the forward swing and the back swing. But we're just going to put on some Earth Gems and this won't kill this army. The, these guys are still going to, they're going to get killed. But um, yeah. Well, I will script them to retreat. They're not mindless, so that will work. Um, but yeah, the important thing with this is unless your opponent can do turn one mass flight, it's very difficult for them to block it. It's a very strong combo. Um, but for this to work, though, you need to be able to do turn one earthquake and turn one mass flight. And there's not a lot of nations with really high default earth and default air access. Um, and I, I should have come in with an army, but the important thing here... Uh, these guys all got damaged. I mean, you need a lot of Earthquakes to kill these dudes. But the important thing is that our side of the battlefield... Normally when you Earthquake, you're going to hit yourself. Um, these guys did not take any checks from Earthquake. They're go both going to be at completely full health, right? So uh, that's another really powerful combo. Um, if you can manage to get... Turn one Earthquake and turn one Mass Flight. You will be immune and the enemy won't and they're big battlefield wipes that can really swing the course of combat. Um, there are some nations that do it particularly well, like uh, the Falegras tend to do this thing really well since they can, they have built-in kind of communions with that are hardwired, so they can kind of do these things turn one. But, um, but yeah, that's one of the things. All right, the next thing that we're going to talk about is uh, kind of interesting mechanics having to do with assassination or seductions and uh, forts. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to have... I'm going to show you kind of an interaction here where if you go on top of a fort... Uh, let's have this guy do, like... We'll just have him do Master and Slave a few times. But if you go on top of a fort... Okay, we're on top of it. 
Um, what is important is that um, basically you're going to... They obviously can't patrol this turn. Now, if these guys could scale walls, um, then they would actually be able to... These dryads would be able to sit on top of this fort and safely, without worrying about getting patrolled out, seduce or assassinate people inside the fort. But they can't. They're dryads. That would be silly if they could. Um, but what you can do is we can move these guys off the same turn we move these guys in. And we're going to have Bandar break out because they're worried. All right, they break out. They've now taken control of the province. And from Bandar's perspective, they can't see any of the seducers. From Pangea's perspective, we now have a bunch of seducers in here. So we could set them all to seduce. And uh, from Bandar Log, we say, okay, we, there may be seducers here. Let's patrol. Right? Um, but Pangea also says, okay, let's send back in the army to kill the patrollers. And so basically, we get all the seductions off. This happens before combat. And then uh, he goes to patrol, but we move an army on top. And uh, we steal it. Or, you know, we win the combat. You don't have to steal it. You just win the combat. And um, because we won this combat, he's incapable of patrolling. So that is a way to basically protect your seducers or assassins. Um, that's pretty annoying, but it's basically cycling on and off forts. Um, the ways to counter this are basically whenever you patrol, you have to patrol with enough stuff that's going to kill whatever is going to, you know, come on top of this fort. So if Bandar Log knew that Pangea would send an army here, they would have to basically patrol with a really big scary army themselves. Uh, so it's a pretty uh, powerful kind of mechanic or combo that can really force your opponent to do things they, they probably don't want to do. So that's another one. All right. Uh, the next one I'm going to show you is going to be pretty... Every vet is going to know about this, but if you're not a vet, um, it's super goddamn annoying. And it is called the Har Harmonica Golem. <clears throat> now, what is the Har Harmonica? It's an artifact. It's construction eight, so there can only be one of them. Um, you can, yeah, it's pretty expensive. It's 40 pearls and 25 death gems. It casts start, it casts wailing winds at the start of combat. And if that makes you like, if, if I were to tell you that that's not the most important part of this artifact, like your jaw should drop to the ground because casting wailing winds at the start of combat is huge. Um, kind of the coolest part of it is you actually can cast spell call horror and it's only going to cost you five fatigue and no slaves They don't read any of this but all things all spells bound to items cost five fatigue and no gems so yeah this is going to basically you can just use your golem to call a bunch of horrors while you have wailing winds up horrors almost always have some kind of fear aura um this is very capable of routing small armies um and even sometimes if you get lucky routing big ones um, and the horrors can just, they're, they're extremely disruptive. And what you do, you need to put some returning item on them. Sometimes you use Armor of Virtue. This is another artifact. Um, and you often want to give him one Astral Booster. It can be a Crystal Coin or a Hat. Uh, but this will allow him to teleport. So you teleport him, you put him in the back, and you just have him do Call Horror. And it's a very low commitment way to raid. So this is the Har Harmonica Golem. A lot of times the... Um, I think that this goal, uh, this horror jumped on him like right away. I think he only got one casting off. Yeah, that's really rare. A lot of times you'll get five castings off. I don't know why it went... Because he's mindless. They tend to kind of ignore him. But here you can see this horror... Okay, it wasn't quite enough to kill the PD. A lot of... Okay, we're going to do it again, because nine times out of ten, this is going to work. But it's, like, super random like that. Sometimes it works real well, sometimes it doesn't. But it's, once you've paid for the investment, it's pretty cheap. And it's very annoying to deal with. Very hard to kill this guy. What is this business? I've killed him twice now. This heart is going to totally kill the PD, though. This guy's got 20 protection. And, uh, yeah, ethereal. Good luck. Yeah, that killed everybody. Um, 
but I just want to show you that he doesn't always get insta-attacked. One thing that's kind of weird about this is it's not actually, even when you win combat, it's not going to kill the Fort PD. Like, the, the, what is going on? I swear to God, this never happens. All right, we're going to do it again. If this happens a third time, I'm going to freak out. If this happens a third time, we'll try Horror Mark and then do it. But this is very strange. It, I swear it never happens like this. Maybe it's he's the only mage commander. I have no idea. That is very strange. Literally doesn't work that way. Um, you can do horror mark here. That may... Do we have a shield? No. Okay. I, I We'll see if this improves it. It might be he just gets sent home. Okay, yeah, so here we go. He called a bunch of horrors. We did horror mark first. You can do that. Usually you don't need to. I don't know what happened. Anyway, that's the horror harmonica golem. They're really annoying. Uh, I think the best thing about them is that there can only be one of them in the game. Otherwise, it would be a very annoying game to play. Um, anyway, that's that. All right, guys, next one is using Ravenous Swarm to pick off important casters. Uh, a lot of times... Somebody will be, like, for, for whatever reason, let's say they have a Lich, because a lot of the good Death Mages you're going to get are going to be undead, right? That's just all that most of the generic summons are. Not all of them, but a lot of them. Um, and if you have Death Spells you want them to cast, uh, a lot of times they're the only Death person in the army. So one thing you can do to just snipe them is you put up Ravenous Swarm turn one. Uh, and that's going to get him. That actually got him, bef like, right after he ca He literally had Rigor Mortis up for, like, a fraction of a second. And then this killed him. So, uh, that's a pretty powerful combo you can do. This also kind of works on tarts. A lot of times it won't kill him, but uh, it's a one way to deal with him. But yeah, anyway. Ravenous Swarm to pick off solo undead casters. Alright, uh, next one's a very quick one. This is the combination of Bane Venom Charm and a Disease Grinder. Uh, this lets you turn a uh, disease into a death gem. It's kind of expensive. It's got a long payback period, and it's a, it's an artifact. So this is, I wouldn't really call this strong, but it's a kind of obscure, interesting little thing. Uh, if you put anything that causes disease, there's a few items that cause uh, disease. Uh, you can look it up in the mod inspector to see which ones, but <clears throat> uh, Bane Venom Charm is kind of the classic. And uh, yeah, if you put this on your dude and you put a disease grinder... Uh, it will cycle it off, and you can do this on an undead, where uh, them being diseased isn't going to cause their hit points to degrade. And yeah, this is a decent way to get one death gem a turn, though this is an expensive investment. However, you know, if you have this item, you always want to be collecting a death gem. But I think the idea is you would just pull it off and put it on an important mage. If you end up getting somebody diseased, you want to get this rid of, uh, get to get rid of the disease on. Uh, but in the meantime, until you have that um, that mage you need to de-disease, you can just put it on a dude like this. And there you go. All right, guys. Uh, the next one is going to be... Uh, basically, with flyers, if you have them on a line formation and attack, um, they will not fly. Which uh, is... I, I don't know if I would call it a powerful... It's pretty important being able to do that when you want to. Like... If you don't have the numbers advantage, sometimes you don't want to fly. So, um, what you can see here is these guys who are in a lot. Okay, let me just show you. Oh, wait, that didn't actually work. Why did they fly? Oh, the army routed. Uh, hang tight, one second. All right. So I sorted that back out. I think the army routed and that caused them to fly. Okay, so we've got these guys there on attack rear. These guys are holding attack. And these guys are uh, attack rear, but they're in a box. So you can see these guys walk forward. These guys, even though they're in a line formation, but they're on holding attack, they're going to fly. And uh, these guys march. So... If you're playing a flying nation, it's pretty important to understand that. 
Uh, kind of interesting because you can still do a line formation and do uh, attack rear uh, and have them fly. Uh, but yeah, anyway, it's kind of, it's not, I wouldn't call this very intuitive uh, because a lot of times you, you would think if they were in a line formation, if that was the thing that caused them to march on the ground instead of to fly, the hold and attack wouldn't change anything, but it does. Uh, so anyway, um, it's useful in game. It's a kind of powerful um, thing to sometimes, if you have a big bunch of flyers who everybody's expecting is going to jump on you, um, it's really, it can be that, you know, like if you have a huge Thunderstrike battery or something, like if you're playing Kalem, um, and you surprise the enemy, they're expecting you to just blob around them and fight, and so they blob up so that you can't surround them. You just sit there and hit them with Thunderstrike, and your guys are on, <laughs> like, marching forward like normal ground troops. Um, so anyway, it's, it's a pretty powerful tool to, uh, be able to change that, and, uh, that's how that works. All right, guys, I uh, got another one for you. The next one is a Phoenix Pyre Golem. These things are horrible. They're complete cancer. Golems are really hard to kill uh, because they're mindless. A lot of the things that will, like, insta-kill you, like Soul Slay, won't really work on them. Yeah, they're a kind of nightmare uh, to kill with Phoenix Pyre on because um, the other thing is they don't fatigue out in melee. So there's a few things that combine to make it really strong. The only thing is that if the battle times out, they'll dissolve. Um, and now we'll go through Phoenix Pyre. But you stack them up with Reinvigoration. You can also put, like, Stone Boots or something here, too. Uh, you give them a couple gems. You empower them in fire. This is not cheap. I don't know if I mentioned that. This is very expensive because you have to empower in fire. But, yeah, it's really strong. And, um, yeah, they're just going to go to town here um, killing stuff. I've actually got a pretty strong army scripted from Bandar. We've got Rush of Strength and Weapons of Sharpness on uh, big cudgel-carrying dudes. Usually not the kind of thing you'd want to send a thug into. Uh, I think some of these guys have Rush of Strength. I don't know if I got it on enough of them. Did any of these guys get it? Yeah, okay, they did. Some of them got... Uh, you can see the sword here for Weapons of Sharpness. Okay, and they're able to kill him. Uh, but can they kill him enough? And this is Phoenix Pyre Golem stuff. Uh, the thing is, it's very expensive. You tend to get a boatload of afflictions, though. Like, a lot, a lot of afflictions. Uh, so, uh, a lot of times, too, you'll have, a, like, an astral hat here for cloud trap using and stuff. But it's, uh, it's very strong. It's also very annoying. And, um... It's very expensive, and it, it a lot of times, unlike other things like super combatants you can get that you can use and use and use, uh, these guys tend to kind of get used up. So it's kind of a really expensive thing that kind of gets used up. But uh, they're really strong, so there's definitely a place for them. Uh, but yeah, that's a definite really annoying combo to have to fight. All right, uh, the next one is a silly spell and enchantment called Vile Water. We're going to cast it a couple times here. And uh, we're going to get us some gelatinous cubes. And uh, this is special because it, uh, it basically has a checker die. And checker dies are very annoying. Very, very annoying. And, um, we'll show you. So what we're going to do... Let's say Bandar Log wants to be in the thug game, right? So they get... Uh, let's get uh, somebody fancy, like a Bane Lord. Uh, and then we'll give them a big pile of gear. And uh, they're going to have this Bane Lord run around with all sorts of cool stuff. Like he's going to have a Vine Shield and a Frost Brand and a Horror Helmet and Armor of Knights and Boots of Quickness and this and this. All right. And our Bane Lord's right here. And we're going to give him this full kit of gear. 
and he's very scary. And I'll show you how scary he is, because we'll kill a PD dump here with him. This isn't exactly a measure of super scariness, but we'll show that he's pretty good. Bane Lords are pretty good thug chassis. This guy doesn't have regen or any way to deal with chip damage. He's just going to kill everybody here before they can do much damage to him. All right. So that's how Bane Lords work. Very scary. And, you know, we could do all sorts of fancy things to try to deal with him. What we're going to do, actually, is uh, we're going to cheese him. We're going to cheese him with two cubes and a dryad. And a lot of times what you want to cast on them is... Uh, we'll actually bring this guy, too. We'll just bring two super budget dudes. Here we go. Hold an attack. These guys have 50 HP, so they should get targeted by all of the spells. And this guy is going to do enlarge and large. And this guy is going to do summon earth power and iron warriors twice. And uh, that should work. Actually, we'll just we'll just do Iron Wars right here at the beginning. And um, yeah, we'll see how this goes. Oh, they're not insta dying. Oh, there he goes. Um, but yeah, how this works is they have a Swallow on Trample, uh, and if they fail to evade, that guy had pretty high, uh, defense. Uh, if they fail to, uh, evade, they get Swallowed. Which is, you can see what happened here. Uh, before that, uh, he mostly evaded the attack, he took one damage, mostly evaded the attack. So if you have really high defense, you can kind of survive this for a while, which, uh, the Bane Lord had pretty good defense. I think it's a check against, like, 8 or 12, I can't remember. But it's a, it's a pretty low check, so if you have, like, 20-something defense, you can dodge it for a while. But eventually, they'll get you. Uh, a lot of times, you want to cast Enlarge on them, so, they, you know, to be able to trample, you have to be bigger then. So with Enlarge, they can go after size 4 guys. Here, we wouldn't have needed to have enlarged them. But anyway, these guys are very powerful anti-thug combo things you can do. Um... I think that's it, guys. I think we're... I've probably got more tricks than I could show y'all. But uh, let me know if y'all like the video. It's kind of different. Um, anyway, see y'all next time.